today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful folded Christmas tree. It is so easy to do and you don't need a lot of tools to make it. Uh, it has a couple of layers to it. Uh, it uses embossing techniques and uh, the little uh, Christmas baubles uh, sequence that have been glued onto the little Christmas tree. So it's, uh, it makes a lovely little Christmas card. It's flat so that it sends well in the mail as well. Uh, and it won't any, add any extra cost uh, to your po postage price. So let's get started and show you how to make the this lovely card. The tools that you're going to need for this is an A5 sheet of white cardstock. Uh, this is the Kazaz uh, 250 GSM cardstock. It's a lovely weight uh, for card bases. You are also going to need a 10 by 14 centimetre mat which is in the SB Essentials in pomegranate. You will also need a 9 by 13 white cardstock which is the same cardstock as your uh, base, the 250 GSM and this is the one that we will emboss. You will need your Merry Christmas stamp, you will need glue dots, you will need double sided tape, you will need your glossy accents, you will need a bone scorer uh, and in this is my little gold sequence and my silver sequence, you may not see them really well there. There is a little piece of SB Essentials in chestnut for the tree trunk. I have already pre-cut my Christmas tree um, in the um, sorry in the um, the double-sided paper in the um, Merry Christmas dots in the Merry Christmas collection. Now I've cut that from the ninth circle, so one being the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is on this circle here, and I've already pre-cut that in my Easy Press. Um, but you can, you know, if you don't have an Easy Press, you could use any other die cutter that you might have already. Now we only actually need half of this. You will need a bone scorer. You will need the embossing folder stars. And it would be handy to have a pair of um, tweezers to pick up the. Um, sequence because they are a little bit piddly. Okay, so we'll so get started. You're just going to create, it's going to be a landscape card fold. So just fold your A5 piece in half and give it a score just to give those nice crisp edges. Oh, now the other thing that I didn't mention, um, which I do put on all of my cards, is this beautiful stamp handmade for you because you're worth it. It's lovely and I stamp all of my cards on the back with this. It just gives it that little personal touch from yourself. So we will be stamping that um, and that will be in the archival jet black ink and the Merry Christmas is in the archival vermilion ink. So once you've folded your card base and this is, like I said, the orientation is going to be landscape so this is folding out this way. We need to emboss our uh, 9 by 13 piece of white cardstock and if you notice on um, our example here, and I might just bring that forward a little bit for you, hopefully you can see that, um, you will notice that the Merry Christmas has been uh, stamped where there's no embossing. So we actually have to put our um, cardstock in on an angle and the way I've done that is I want to be able to stamp on this bottom right hand corner. Now you do need to be careful which way you put this in. So you want the raised edge of your embossing folder. So if you run your hand over it you'll feel that one side is raised and one side is indented. You want the back of your cardstock to be on the raised portion so that when you emboss it, the raised portion is the front of your card. So because I want this bottom right hand corner to have no embossing, 
I need to make sure it stays out. So if you just line up the corner of your cardstock with the corner of your embossing folder and just bring it down till you think you have enough room to put your greeting in. So our greeting is quite small and you could just test that out, you know, and that, so that's going to stand well in that. So we will emboss um, only a portion of this and I'm going to use the easy press to emboss that. Um, so just bear with me, I'm just going to be now, off camera. Now when you me. use the easy press you will need to use your A base pay and on the embossing folders is your X other brands. Now it does actually state that on the embossing folder. Uh, it has here that you will need your Ace Bay pay, uh, base pad and X other brands uh, pad. So all the guesswork is taken out um, and it's already got it on there for you. So base plate and then the green other brands on the top. So just bear with me for a minute and I'll just run this through the easy press. Okay, so we have the raised section, which was the raised section was on the base, so it pushes the image up. Now we will also need our trimmer, but we're not actually going to use our trimmer to trim anything. We need to use our trimmer as a scoring tool because we need to put in two score marks along the edge of where that embossing folder goes. Now because you're going to score down you need to make sure that you turn your uh, embossed image around the other way so that when you press into the, the cutting groove here the embossed image is going to go down and, and because you want the front to be raised. So just take your blade out, which is very easy. These um, come out really easy. Just sort of put your fingers in there and separate them such, and then just pull that out. So you need to line up, and you're going to do two lines. So you want it to be just off the corner, and you want to be just the first line. You, you sort of really want it to be following the way, that the angle of the embossed image. So just drop your little guide down and use your bone folder and just guide through the cutting groove that you might want to do it a couple of times. And then really you're just going to, for your second one, you're going to move it down till you, you're almost at that corner. Making sure that you've got kind of the same space at the top as you do at the bottom because you, you want to create two even lines. If you want to try and match it up right into the corner you could do that too but that may be a little difficult. So what you end up with is your stars embossed at the top and your two embossing lines here at the bottom. And it just gives it that finish line to the top part of being embossed. And this part down here is where you're going to stamp your greeting. So we'll actually stamp that greeting now while it's in it off the card. And you just pop these back in by the same way and they just slide back in. Very easy to do. So the, the stamping is... Uh, Merry Christmas. It is done with the Million uh, Stamp Archival Ink. And always bring your ink pad to your stamp. You have a better chance of getting an even uh, amount of ink um, and you can control that it doesn't get over onto the edges as well. And you really just need to do a light tap. These um, ink pads are, you know, they're generally quite inky so you don't need to really bang it down. You, you will achieve what you want just by light taps. Make sure that your greeting is the right way and just place it centrally, you know, in that unembossed place. Straight down, straight up. You don't need to rock it or, or squish it. You will get a very good stamped image just by straight down, straight up. That's a, a beautiful um, stamp. I love that stamp. It's a, in the script. Uh, you can buy it singularly. I will have all the details of the products used um, in the description below. Now, you can now um, attach your embossed image to your pomegranate mat because you, you're not actually going to be attaching uh, or doing anything more to this other than attaching the, the stamp tree. So we're just using our double-sided tape for that. Now, remembering that you are going to be um, taping down an embossed section, I like to 
run tape along the edges, all edges of the card, as close to the edge as possible. And then I run another one through the centre of, of whatever it is that I'm attaching. I, I think it's uh, very important that, you know, when you're giving a card, that you want that card to last, not just for the day that you give it, but you want that card to last, you know, into the future as well. And there would be nothing more embarrassing than to have your card fronts fall off your handmade card. It sort of takes away from, um, you know, the beautiful work that you've, you've done and it doesn't, doesn't look good. So just make sure that you do put enough um, double-sided tape on to make sure that that lasts and keeping in mind that you are putting down an embossed image as well. So you're just going to place that down, have even um, space around, it allows for about a half a centimetre around each one, and then just make sure that that's nice and firm down there, and that's lovely. So, so far that's what we've got. Now you can attach this mat now to your white base card. It has just a slightly smaller uh, gap around this than it does on the red one, but same, same principle, I always run uh, double-sided tape around all four edges close to the edge so that it won't lift up and then run one through the centre. Now this double-sided tape is so easy to, to just break off, it, just place your finger at the end and, and pull on it and it will actually tear. So it's um, quite strong this tape. And also, um, before you pull it all off, just run your finger over all this tape and burnish that down and that also makes sure that the tape stays in place when you go to lift it because unless you've got nails, it can sometimes be a little bit hard to get this backing off. Um, but you could use the back of your blade or you know anything that's got a small uh, little play skin in it. You could you know use your piercing tool as well to get the backing off. So really just get your backing off however you can. Now make sure that your card is landscape and that it is folding and opening the correct way when you put this mat on. Um, don't despair if you do it the wrong way around. You can unless you've left it a day or two, generally pull them back up. You can um, run your heat tool over it just to let that um, double sided tape let go. But unless you've left it a long time, you can usually get it up. So that's the base of our card. So all we really need to do now is to create our tree out of the circle. Now you're only going to use half of this circle. So if you fold this in half and just use your bone scorer. And I didn't put my scissors out because we're going to need to cut that. So you'll just grab you know, a little pair of scissors and just cut along that folded line and you're just essentially creating a half a circle. Now you do also need um, a ruler. Sorry, I wasn't very prepared for that, was I? Uh, you will need a ruler and a pencil. And you're going to find the halfway and quarterway marks. Now, this is, let's see if this works better in inches. Sometimes inches just work better because you can get them to halve out a little bit, you know, if you're doing the increments for it. So, I guess in inches it's three and three quarters and in centimeters it's nine and a half. So I guess it, it's not going to really matter in this case. So nine and a half is uh, four and three quarters. So that's your four and a half mark there. If we were to find the four and three quarters, it's sort of halfway between the four and the five. Just make a little mark there and you want to do a 90 degree line. So if you line the end of your ruler up with the edge of your circle, then you've essentially created your 90 degree line. And just run a, a light pencil mark down there, and that's your halfway mark. Now you want to find the quarter mark. So you're going to go halfway between this edge, the left edge, and the halfway mark that you just had. 
So that was four and three quarters, so half of four and three quarters, uh, and this will test my math out now. So um, two and a half is half of five, so essentially you're going to go um, it, uh, two and, I don't know, just before two and a half, so probably just a flick before that should be about it. And again, do the same thing, so just line your edgy ruler up with the edge of your half circle and that will give you your 90 degree line. Now, this can be a bit tricky to explain, so um, I'm hoping that I will do this justice. You are going to fold down this left side and this portion or the top portion here is going to then run parallel with this line here. So if you pinch it at the top here and fold down so that that line if you can see that edge now follows this line down here. So you just want to make sure that these edges are nice and crisp. And then you're going to fold the next one back and you're going to fold it along that line which was your quarter mark line keeping that pointy part at the tree and just score that down now what I should have said too when you do your circle is make sure that if you've got uh, if you're using paper that has writing which this does make sure that that is running the same way otherwise it's going to look well, it's probably not going to make so much difference here anyway. So we folded down the left hand corner and did basically a 45 degree fold so that the edge now runs that line and then you fold on that edge. This is the top of your tree, this is this point up here. So you're going to make another 45 degree angle and by doing that essentially you bring in this edge over to this edge at a 45 degree angle. So you might want to just tuck, pinch that in there so that the point is pointy and just line up your edge with that top edge and then just crease that down. So that is your little tree. It is actually quite easy to do. Now because this is all going to be stuck down, you don't see any of those pencil marks that you just done. So you don't need to go back and um, rub anything out. Now do, to hold these down, you just use your glue dots. So you just peel them back and, and put a glue dot into each little corner there. And that will just hold down each little flap. Last one, and that holds that down. And then all you need to do now is to uh, glue on your little sequins. They are tiny, so you might have to be careful you don't lose them. Um, there is a, a gold one sitting in the top of my silver one. And I'm just going to use glossy accents and glue these all on um, because glossy accents dries clear. You won't, um, you won't see that. And we'll attach that one last so it has a chance to, to dry. And then you just want to um, place them, you know, randomly around just place a little dot of glue you don't need a lot of glue with glossy accents it's actually a very strong glue and so the little um, sequence represents your baubles that you would have on your Christmas tree you could also use the silver ones and color them in uh, with your alcohol ink markers that would be just as effective and that way then you would get different coloured baubles, um, you know, but it, it's just whatever. 
however you want to decorate. I hope you're all going to have a lovely Christmas wherever you might be with family or friends. And that each one of you has a very safe and happy start to your new year. It's a very busy time of year so I hope you do also get to have a bit of me time and do some crafty projects that you perhaps haven't uh, had time throughout the year to do. Right, so that's now essentially our little Christmas baubles attached to that. And we're going to attach the tree, our little tree stump to this as well, just with again with another glue dot um, onto the top of that and it doesn't matter if that glue dot uh, goes out past the actual stump because you, you it's going to attach at the back here anyway. Now try and leave a little bit of stump and I'll, I'll show you why and just sort of place that halfway around so if you're imagining your tree, uh, it's probably not about right imagining your tree trunk would be halfway around your tree. Whoops. Whoopsie. Let's get that back in place. Just didn't quite let that set long enough before I started mucking around with that. And I've moved that one as well. Oh, glue dots are so sticky. You do need to allow just a, a fraction of time to make sure these do stick. Um, that, and that's the, the beauty of Glossy Accents is that it does allow that little bit of wriggle room. Um, but you do have to be patient, of course. So you've, you just want to place this so that it appears like that that is halfway down the bottom of your tree. And then when we place this on here, and we'll get to our little top um, ornament in a minute. The bottom of your Christmas tree is going to sit flush with your pomegranate part here but you need to make sure and I'm going to use, uh, it happens that I've got a big star here, I'm actually going to use that as my guide and put that as my last one there and you're going to attach this so that it's sitting above it. So you might just have to make a little pencil mark and cut off a portion of your tree trunk so that it, it is level. So I'm just going to make a, a mark there with my pencil and cut that off. And that's why I said to make sure you, you leave enough length because you may need to do that depending on where you're going to line up. Now just use your double sided tape to tape this one down. Again just place it onto the edges. If you get a little bit of uh, tape that goes over you can just roll that back once you put it in place. And your little tree trunk is just wide enough to place the 6mm tape on it and just take all those backings off and just tuck in any little bit of overhang you have of, of double sided tape there. And again on that tree trunk. And then just line that up with the tree trunk at the bottom 
and that star, which is essentially going to be the star, represents the star. Oops, make sure it's all straight. And that looks good. And then just press it into place. And then you can just um, stick your last little uh, sequence on. And we have our folded Christmas tree. Very effective, but very easy to do. And like I said, I always uh, stamp the back of my cards with my handmade for you because you're worth it stamp. I just think that's a, a really lovely thing to place on a uh, handmade card for someone that you love. And that now completes a card and you can just write your own personal message inside. So thank you for joining me for making this wonderful little folded Christmas tree. And Merry Christmas, everybody.